are an independent spiritual church in North Fort Worth. We are Mercy Life Church. Well, hello, everyone. So, um, it's been a hectic couple of days. Some of you may be wondering why we are going live on a Thursday night at 9.49 p.m. And, well, Tristan gave an amazing sermon last week while I was in Virginia. Unfortunately, you know, we did a bunch of test streams and everything else, and when he went live, everything went wrong. And so the quality's awful. You can barely hear him. So, you know what? We're testing new streaming equipment anyway. And so we're like, let's just go ahead and re-record it. So, um... Yeah, so that's what we're doing tonight. Uh, Tristan at uh, Tablets went to sleep, but um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. So let's go ahead and pray. We're getting kind of slap happy, but um, let's just go ahead and pray and just ask for the Holy Spirit to come. And Father. We just want to thank you for this day. We want to thank you for the time we've had with friends um, and just for the most part that everything seems to be working well uh, tonight. Um, yeah, we've had a couple of hiccups, but it's like at least we know why we've had hiccups. So, Lord, we just ask that you just be with Pastor Tristan. Uh, you uh, be... Uh, over his speaking voice and just Lord I want to pray for everyone watching either tonight or in the future that uh, your message will just speak to them Lord it's in your son's name we pray amen okay sorry guys <laughs> Wait, what? Are we good? Okay, okay, sorry guys, this is a crazy, crazy day. To give you an insight, this is the second time we had to do this message. Well, whole service, really. So it's been really stressful. This time is much better, though. Last time, the devil was attacking my throat. I had an itch that I just could not get rid of. It was horrible. So, bloopers. <laughs> so, hey guys, welcome to Mercy Life Church. I'm Pastor Tristan. And I am just so happy you are here. Before we get into the message, I actually have a joke that I thought would be great to lighten up the mood, even though our moods are pretty good right now. But hey, maybe somebody's having a rough day. So the joke is as follows. I heard about these three people, a Russian, an American, and a blind. It should be good. It's talking about a blind. <laughs> they were all talking together, and the Russian said, we were the first ones in space. The American said, well, we were the first ones on the moon. The blind said... That's nothing. We're going to be the first ones on the sun. Okay, funny. Interesting. The American and the Russian both laughed and said, You can't go to the sun. It's way too hot up there. You're just going to burn up. And the blonde said, We know that. We're not stupid. We're going to go at night when the sun's not out. <laughs> funny. I thought that was hilarious. I thought somebody might, somebody might like that. If you don't, oh well. Well, guys, we've been in a series. Pretty good series, I think. Uh, we've talked about God's goodness, God's mercy, and God's justice. Today, the title of the message is The Love of the Father. Today, we're talking about God's amazing love. I'm going to get straight into the point. I'm going to get straight into the first point. The first point is, how do I know God loves me? We've all asked ourselves that at least one time. I know I have. Psalm 139, verses 13 through 14. And for those who are wondering, I am reading out of the NIV translation, uh, New International Version. Sorry, guys, it's, it's been a long day. <laughs> for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that fully. Hang on. It says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Fearfully and wonderfully made. Let's think about that. Fearfully, meaning we are made to fear God. Not fear God like he is a threat or a spider, a snake, something terrifying, but to just be terrified of being away from God. 
not being near his presence. Which, uh, I'll mention that later. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Matthew 10, verses 29 through 31 says, Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And even the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth much more than many sparrows. Do y'all know how much hair we have? Now, of course, everyone's made differently. So one person may have more hair than the other one. But the, just thousands, maybe even millions of strands of hair. Hundred thousands. Hundred thousands. Because that's a big number. Like, uh, just think about it this way. Hundred thousand hairs. Imagine if you had a dollar for every hair strand. We would all be rich. <laughs> You know, and then it says, you are, mirth, you, you are worth more than many sparrows. Do you hear that? You are worth much more than many, many sparrows. So, I have a little story. Every illustration is going to be followed with the story at the end of every point. And so, back in September 11th, 2022, um, just, for, just in case we... Hit, hit, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Just in case we have anybody watching that's not aware about what September 11th is. September 11th is when America got attacked. And it's a very personal day for some people. And so, the Lord told me on September, I believe it was 1st or 2nd, I've called you into ministry. I want you to start a church. And I go, and in my mind, I'm like, Lord, I don't got money to start a church. I don't got money. If I had money, I wouldn't be living with my parents still. And we'll get to that later, guys. Don't worry about that. But, so I called up a friend, the same lady who helped me get saved, person who helped me dedicate my life to Christ. I called her. I talked to her. I talked to Pastor William. And they both were like, yeah, let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens. So we did it. Beautiful. We had an amazing service. We had a little, it was, I guess you'd call it a little memorial part uh, for 9-11, you know. And it was beautiful. I had friends who don't even go to church on the regular show up. You know, um, Pastor William got to lead communion, and we talked a lot about communion and the deeper sense of it and what Scripture says. And um, my good friend Christy, she went up there, and she read Scripture, and it was just a beautiful thing. Well, my bad. No, she didn't read Scripture. She gave a live testimony, and I'm not going to get into that because that's a lot – but so uh, it was just a beautiful time. I gave a message about the church and what the church really is, different denominations, how a church is, all of that, which I am planning on preaching that in, in the future here for Mercy Life Church. But then a couple of weeks went by, and I decided, you know what? I'm going to move out. I'm just going to pack a bag, call a friend, and just skedaddle. So I did that. It was bad. I moved out of my parents' house. But I didn't move out in a good way. I packed a bag, and I left around 9 o'clock at night, and I did not tell them where I was going, who I was with. I didn't even have my cell phone with me. It, it was horrible, guys. I ran away from my calling for months. It wasn't until Christy let me move in with her, and I couldn't even stay there for two months. And in that time, I was really studying, and I was asking God every day, God, who do you want me to be? So I want to skip forward from September, well, I moved, I moved in with her uh, September, October, around October-ish. And so let's skip to November, and I have to move out because they're having family come and stay with them. So her husband makes me move out. And so I moved into a hotel. Guys, I've never lived in a hotel. I don't recommend it. It's horrible. <laughs> it's very lonely and boring because you have nothing to do. You know, because I was there so long, I actually became good friends with the front desk staff. So if I just got bored, I would just walk downstairs and talk to them. But still, it's really, it's not a good position for somebody to be in. But because I made a bad decision, I had to face the consequences. And what makes all of this so bad was there was outside force giving detail that was not true. People left and right are just made coming up with all kinds of things that did not happen. But because I wasn't in church, and I wasn't based in a church, and I wasn't studying the Word and having worship at least once a day, 
I fell apart. I partied. I didn't do drugs. Thank the Lord. I did not, I did not get into drugs. <laughs> I'm sorry. You guys will know why I'm laughing <laughs> later. But I didn't get into drugs at that time. <laughs> but it was just a terrible time for me. Because I didn't know what I was going to do the rest of my life. And then skip forward to November, I'm living in a hotel. I know what I'm doing. So I, when I live in the hotel, I'm going to... Two churches. I'm going to Gateway Church, which, which is based out of South Lake, Texas. Amazing church. I highly recommend them for anything. <laughs> and then I was going to Benbrook Seventh-day Adventist Church. And so I was going to those two churches. And one afternoon, I was just reading my Bible uh, in the hotel, and God spoke to me. I was reading the verse where Peter said, which, and I should have put this in the message, but I didn't, where, Peter, where Jesus told Peter, Something about Peter building his church on the rock. And when I read the word church, God told me, you're going to start another church. He didn't say start. He said, you're going to plant another church. And I go, where? He goes, you'll see. I'll, I'll, give, you a, I'll give you a building. So we're going to go from November to February. In that timeline, I am just praying and seeking God every day. And then a miracle happens. We get an apartment. We mean my dad, um, who if you've been following the church, you've, you have seen my dad a couple, well, once, doing a scripture reading for our Easter morning service. But I, we get this amazing, amazing apartment. It's beautiful, guys. If it wasn't a time, I actually told you a couple pictures. <laughs> but it's beautiful. I'm laying in bed, March 3rd. I was having my alone time with God. And God told me, it's time to plant that church. And I go, where? With what money? And he goes, a church isn't a fancy building. A church is more than one person gathering in my name in Matthew. It says that. But two or more are gathered, there I am in your midst. Who is I? Jesus. God. Are there with you. So God said, start a church from your apartment. Now, long story short, we were going to launch Seven Day Adventures, but then some legal actions got in the way, and we decided not to. And then we decided to launch where we are now, independent, non-denominational. And I didn't know what to call the church. I was like, Lord, what should I call the church? And here we are, Mercy Life Church. The Lord told me, do Mercy Life. I go, okay. I go, not trying to question you, God, but why mercy life? And he goes, because I am merciful. I have to be merciful for you to live a life. And I go, mm. yeah, that is so true. I told you this long story, and I spent too long on it. <laughs> but I told you this story, because I just want you to know, God loves you so much that he, he would take you from being homeless to being a pastor of a church. He did that to me. In just, what, four or five months, I went from being homeless, not knowing if I would have food, and my stomach by the end of the day to now being a pastor of a church. And God is giving us connections left and right. We have built some amazing relationships with some of you people watching this. Some of you may be watching this right now. You know, God has brought me so far. So my third point is how much does God love me? How much does God love me? It's a question. Second point, my, did I say third? My bad, guys. Second point how much does God love me? Romans 5, 8 says, For God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Hang on. While we were sinning, Jesus surrendered his life on that cross. That, that way so we could have eternal life. Let me ask you a question. Do y'all know matzah bread? Any of y'all ever seen that? You know how it has the little stripes on it? Those are the stripes of Jesus. Those are his stripes. While somebody else across the world was sinning, Jesus said, you know what? I love you. So I'm going to have my own life on the cross. John 4.16. First John 4.16 says, And so we know and rely on the, on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God. Okay. You know what I love about Christianity? It is non-conclusive. I think it's the word. Not gonna, yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry guys, it's been a day. <laughs> but what I'm saying is God doesn't care who you are. You know, 
a, re a reoccurring thing in cults is you have to do something a certain way. You have to live a life a certain way. You have to wear clothes a certain way. You have to worship a god a certain way, or many gods in other uh, religions. But Christianity is not a religion. It's a lifestyle. Because <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I hope y'all don't hear that. But maybe you should tell them why you're laughing. Sorry, uh, I have a cat who y'all may have seen before going nuts in the room. I rebuke you, Satan. <laughs> <laughs> but Christianity is a non-conclusive. There we go, non-conclusive. There we go, I think is the word. <laughs> because whoever, just like John 3, 16, whoever believes in him will have eternal life. <laughs> okay. Whoever lives in love lives in God. So if you live in love... You're living in God. No, you do not turn into God. But, yeah, I'm sorry guys, I just lost my train of thought. It's been a day. <laughs> you know, like, keep talking and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoever lives in God. Okay, let me just read this whole verse for y'all again. I'm sorry guys. God is love. Whoever lives in love, lives in God. So if you live in love, you have God's spirit in your life. God's amazing love and God's anointing over your life. And hi, Cheetah. And God in them, meaning God's spirit is in you. Okay, this we should start picking up and getting much better now, guys. I'm so sorry. Romans eight thirty seven through thirty nine says, "No, in all things we are." No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, or any powers, neither height, height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Savior. You know what that means? Nothing can separate us from God. Not a single thing. What? Stop messing with Oh! Me. <laughs> okay. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's, it's been a day. E Ephesians. Uh, I just thought of something funny. You know what's so funny, guys? I used to say Ephesians. <laughs> and Ephesians. Anybody who's been reading the Bible their whole life or even reads the Bible, you should know it's not Ephesians. It's Ephesians. If you say Ephesians, now you know. And if you don't like it, Take it up with God. So Ephesians two four five. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> two four five. NIV. But why did I read that? <laughs> but because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy, we just talked about mercy a couple weeks ago. We just talked about God's mercy and God's justice. So God who is rich in mercy made us alive. Made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgression. It is by grace you have been saved. It is by grace you are saved. It's not by a simple prayer that you save. It's that you say at church. That prayer is just the first step in your life of victory through Jesus. Psalm 86 verse 15. But you, Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God. Slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. If you are taking... If you are taking notes, I highly recommend that you write down Psalm 86, 15. I'll read it to you again because it is good. But you, Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger. If I had a highlighter right now, I would undermark slow to anger so much. Like, I would make the paper bleed. <laughs> I'm bounding in love and faithfulness. John 15, 13 says, greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friend I heard about this story at a church the other day it was this group of terrorists took Christians to took Christians to an abandoned warehouse and said I'll give you one option you said that you are not you do not do not proclaim the name of Jesus right now and I will save your life they had them on the floor like this do you know what they were doing? They were taking up their cross. 
Jesus gave his life on that cross for us. They gave their life for Jesus. They put a gun against their head, and every single one of them were not afraid. They did not get upset nor scared. Or, I mean, they were probably terrified. But you know what they did instead of being scared? They worshipped God. They sang praise music or song, sang, something like that. Praise music. And just worshipped God with all of their life and all of their soul. And they were shot. Six individuals on how sleep in the grave. And I just, I think it's so sad because that's not from God. If somebody gives you a choice to either choose Jesus or not Jesus, it's not from God. And I have the hiccups now. Great. So, my third point today is God's love expressed. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world. By the way, that's first John four nine. I'm so sorry guys. I just got busy reading. That's why I this is why I need to sit down. <laughs> so sorry guys. Okay, let me just start from the beginning. First John four nine. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God. Not that we love God. Let's be honest. When we are born out of our mother's womb, we don't love God. We love the world. We don't do anything for God. We do stuff for ourselves. That's why it's so important. The Great Commission is so important. You know, I wish we had this on the screen for y'all, but commission is co, C-O, co-worker, mission, co-mission, meaning it is a group. It's not just one person. Co-mission. Remember that. Because if we don't go out and share the gospel, then nobody's going to know about Jesus. It's not going to know that. Nobody's going to know. Because the only way you know about something is if you're told about it. Amen. Amen? Yeah. Okay. I don't know why I did that. That he loved us and sent his son as an atoning, atoning sacrifice for us. Since I wish I had that definition up, guys. But unfortunately, I don't. You're gonna, unfortunately, I don't. And you're going to see it pop up. Um, several more times. I'm so sorry. Growing up, I loved watching Disney Channel. Yes, me. Watching Disney Channel. I loved it. It was just so much fun. I, al I always... I love musicals, and Disney is known for their great musicals. One musical I love in particular is Frozen. Yeah, okay, stop laughing at me. I can hear some of you laughing. Don't laugh at me. <laughs> but... But I love Disney Channel because it was just so funny. And one of my favorite movies, don't laugh at me either, was Frozen. <laughs> I said don't laugh at me. <laughs> <coughs> it was Frozen. I loved, <coughs> I loved watching the journey of Elsa and Anna, princesses of the royal family, trapped within the walls of the castle. Yet, it is not until Elsa becomes queen that the gates are opened and the people are reunited with one another. But because of Elsa's special powers and their uncontrollable ability, the city is sent into a crazed winter and she ruins, and she runs away to hide and live by herself. Princess Anna goes on an adventure to find her sister. <coughs> But in the process, she is struck by Elsa's icy powers. So we explained that we talked about her powers being, uncontrol being uncontrollable. Their uncontrollability was just crazy. And because of her icy powers, so their icy, icy powers, from here on out, there is a distinct concern for Anna, who can only be saved by true love. Hang on. Let's think about this. You know how Frozen in the Bible is a lot alike? True love. God shows this true love for us. The Old Testament, he, ex he explains his love through his wrath. Because if God was so vengeful, why did he save Lot's family? Well, Lot. If God is so vengeful, why did he save Noah from the flood? Why did he tell Noah to go and build an ark? If God is so hateful, why aren't we in hell right now? 
Why, if God is this hateful God, why did He send His one and only Son into the, into the earth just to die? And of course, Jesus did things on the earth, so it wasn't just so He could die, but Jesus dying is the new covenant between God and His people. Because we cannot live up to the old covenant. And now we're going to get into the new old covenant and all of that later. So don't worry about that. <coughs> but so, in 2017, Anshin released a song called Perfect. Here are some of the lyrics. I found it left for me. Darling just dives right in. And follow, and follow my lead. Well, I found a girl beautiful and sweet. I never knew you were the someone waiting for me. Barefoot on the grass, listening to our favorite song. When you said you looked like a mess, I whispered underneath my breath, but you heard it. Darling, you look perfect tonight. You know, God thinks of you like that. God doesn't think we are perfect because we're not perfect. Only Jesus is perfect. What I mean by perfect is we were perfected. God perfected us to be the people he wanted us to be. He didn't make us perfect, but he perfected us. Somebody may be thinking today, am I enough? No, you're not enough. But because of Jesus, God makes you enough. First John 4 isn't talking about romantic love, but it never, nevertheless describes the love God has for us. <coughs> John describes the love God has for us as a sacrificial love. He points out that God has shown his love for us through Jesus. The way God has shown his love through Jesus is the cross. It is a cross-bound, life-sacrificing love. This is a relational love. This is a love that is deeply personal. He loves us so much. God loves you so much. So, I'm going to close today's message with a story. A story that I don't want to tell. I, I don't want to say this. Because it's very embarrassing and disappointing. On the outcome. <clears throat> I graduated high school uh, in May 2021. Recently. For those of you who might be wondering, I'm only 19 years old. And here I am as a senior pastor. Yeah, God started pretty early in my life. <laughs> in a way. But so, prom was the week before graduation. So, I was like, yes, I'm going to go to prom. Me and a good friend go. She calls this good friend of mine who, who we're going to call May. We'll call her May, M-A-Y. She called me, and May was like, hey, I have a friend who has these special brownies. Special. If you don't know, don't know what special brownies are, we're going to leave it at that. <laughs> so we decided we're going to bring those special brownies to prom. So we do. How suspicious would it look to you if you saw two, two, two teenagers handing out brownies in a plastic bag? Secretive. By trees where nobody can see you. Kind of suspicious, right? And not suspicious, then you're probably thinking, well, why didn't you bring enough for everyone? <laughs> Which, nobody wanted those special brownies. Let me put it to you that way. <laughs> so... We both decided to take a couple. I take about two, and then Thurman said I take another two, and then May takes about four to five before the night's over. We're sitting down at a table to give you an insight. We are at a zoo. My school decided, hey, we're going to have prom at a zoo. Very confusing. Don't know why anybody would, but hey, I'm not in charge. <clears throat> but so my principal comes up to me, and he goes, hey, are you sure it's heart? And let me remind you, the brown just like kicks in, so... My mind is spinning all over the place. And I go, uh, yeah. <laughs> and so he pulls me aside. He takes me over. And I'm walking in a direction where there are two police officers and a good friend of my dad's and Pastor Williams. His name is Jason Ferguson. Jason, if you're watching this, hey, how are you? <laughs> but we were told that the social brownies could lead us 15 years in prison. Then they're going to add another 5 to 10 years because of minor endangerment. Meaning we were around minors endangering them or something. My mom picked me up and she was so red that she could have been the Red Hulk. It was bad. Like y'all don't understand. And 
I find out that I'm going to speak with the school Monday. It's Thursday. So I have to go three days just getting caught with special brownies, not knowing what's going to happen, just being told that I could go to prison. I'm not in a good mindset. <laughs> and I was grounded, so I couldn't go to church. If I could have gone to church, I probably would have been in a better mindset. But I didn't go to church. I was grounded, which I wonder why. <laughs> but so I said this prayer that has four words. Lord, I need you. And I said that. Any opportunity, <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> any opportunity that I had, I prayed, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I put my head in my pillow and I said, Lord, I need you. Lord, I, I need you. Lord, I need you. I'm going to sit down. My cat is distracting me. <laughs> but so I prayed that prayer. And I heard a voice in my head one day on Saturday. I heard God say, son, I hear you and I love you and you will be okay. Monday comes, I meet with the school. I was told that I am not able to receive my, grad my diploma at graduation. I will, dis I will receive it, but I can only receive the sleeve to the diploma, and I should have showed y'all the sleeve, but whatever. But, so, instead, I ha instead of going to prison, I had to clean my high school with no AC in the middle of July in summer. For those who don't know, July and August are the hottest months we have in um, Texas. Like, thinking about it, I'm even getting upset. <laughs> thinking about it, it's making me sweat. That's how bad it is. I made a stupid mistake. And God didn't forgive me. He could have left me there and go, you know what, you're being stupid, so I'm just going to ignore you. Instead, he helped me. Why? Because he is a loving father that loves you so very much. Right now, if you were just sitting there and you're like, I haven't experienced this love for you. Then just open your heart to Jesus. Just open your heart to the Lord. The pastor was going to come up and lead you in a prayer. And if this is your first time hearing a message like this, and you want prayer, comment down below in this video and say, I want prayer. Me or Pastor William will get to you. Pastor William. Well, hello, everyone. That was an amazing message by Pastor Tristan. I've now heard it like four times. Um, not today, but um, I've now heard it like four times. Um, and... Uh, I just want to thank Tristan for being vulnerable. Uh, I'll tell you, it's one of the things I really like. It's when a pastor will get up and just be vulnerable and be human. We, because, you know, we're not perfect. Uh, I mean, if you look throughout the Bible, um, I mean, Moses killed a man. David uh, killed a man and, uh, sent, uh, and committed adultery. Uh, Paul uh, was pr prosecuting uh, Christians and killing them. Um, and, I mean, the Bible just goes on and on about how God uses imperfect people. And, you know, that is really the message here is that the power of Christ to transform someone's life is just, just absolutely beautiful. Um, I'd actually, uh, and Tristan knows this, I'd actually gotten to the point where I'd given up on him. So, um, just, it's just amazing the change that God can make in someone's life. So, um, I was going to be speaking on the Holy Spirit at the end of the month. While I was in Virginia, um, God spoke to me because I was actually having trouble and I'm like, how am I going to fit the Holy Spirit into one message? And God's like, make it two. Um, and then at the same time, uh, Tristan was like, you know, would it be possible for you to preach two weeks in a row? I could really use a break. So uh, this Sabbath, I will be starting a mini series on the Holy Spirit. Um, and uh, it's perfect time because today, May 18th at like 1030 p.m., um, today is actually Ascension Day. Um well, I guess it, technically it would have been yesterday from sundown to today at sundown because Jewish calendar. Um, I guess technically right now uh, it is Jerusalem Day. So um, this is, uh, well, we'll talk about that on uh, Saturday. Um, 
but uh, point is, is this weekend I am doing an overview of the Holy Spirit, who he is and uh, things like that. Uh, he. Um, we'll get into that Saturday. <laughs> Not in it. He. Uh, and then the following weekend, uh, following Sabbath, um, in celebration of Pentecost, which is that Sunday, uh, we will be talking about how to get to know the Holy Spirit. We are a spirit-filled, charismatic church. Um, it's something that we felt like, hey, let's go ahead and talk about it. So we're getting into it pretty early. Um, yeah, the Holy Spirit is something we could probably go on five, ten weeks over, but this is a, yeah, uh, this is an overview. And Tristan's kind of anxious to finish up uh, his series. He has two more messages in this series. So, um, so yeah, going to take a break from wrath and talk about the Holy Spirit for a couple of weeks, and then we're going to get back into it. <laughs> yep, yep. So, I'm um, going to go ahead and close this out in prayer. <sighs> Father, just want to thank you once again for Tristan's message. Um, just want to thank you for his vulnerability, Lord. I just want to thank you for the grace and mercy that um, Jason gave to Tristan because he could be leading a prison ministry right now rather than a church. Um, and... Lord, uh, I just, yeah, it's just amazing just how uh, close he was right there when he was just so close to, uh, well, I guess that was the point where he got his life together, Lord. And Lord, just thank you that you can take us in all of our dirtiness and everything else and just come in and just wash that sin away, Lord. Lord, we just want to thank you so much. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Well, we're going to go ahead and end it here. And um, uh, yeah, be see you guys Saturday. Bye-bye.